Well, hello, and welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining me this week. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Now, yesterday, I spent some time at the, uh, the Tara Mandala Temple, it's a Tibetan Buddhist temple out in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. It's a temple that I've spent a lot of time at and working at. I have a deep and profound connection there. It's a, it's a path of the divine feminine. And when I was there yesterday, in a library, uh, the head librarian, uh, Champa, and he was giving this teaching about being kind to everyone. Because he said, because there's a good chance in a previous lifetime that they were your mother. That they were your mother. And so this is one of the great teachings of the Buddha in Tibetan Buddhism. Is to honor everyone. Honor them like they are your mother. Honor them. It's hard to be mean or violent or aggressive or harsh with anyone when we know this truth. When we open to this truth. And so I have a lot, uh, a lot to talk about. And a lot of what I'm going to speak about tonight is from uh, this book. this recent book that Lama Sultram wrote. Lama Sultram is one of my teachers. And the book is called Wisdom, Wisdom Rising. That's a journey uh, into the mandala of the empowered feminine. And I'd like to start, start tonight by saying, you know, all of us have a masculine side and a feminine side. So it's not that we have to, you know, literally have a female body to open to this, to open to this realm of divinity. In fact, you know, most, most of this uh, non-dual lineage, which I teach from, it's a very male-dominant, male-centered, patriarchal teaching. I know many women teachers who <laughs> teach in a very masculine way. And so it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, we can all open to this realm, the divine feminine, the divine mother. We all have this quality of heart within us. And so that's the invitation this evening is to, to join me in simply opening your heart. Opening your heart and dropping out of your mind. Of coming into this present moment. And giving yourselves the opportunity to let go. To let go of anything you've been struggling with. To let go of any heartache, any pain, any sadness or grief. And from this place of letting go, I also invite you to acknowledge what's fully within you. To acknowledge. Acknowledge all that you've been through in this life. And in a kind-hearted and open-hearted way. Just give yourself permission to admit it's hard. It's hard to be human sometimes. It's difficult. It's difficult to let go when there's deep pain and deep trauma within us. And what I have found along the way that's been quite helpful in letting go is to open your heart, open your body, open your life to the Divine Mother. Whether you call that Mary, 
whether you call that Tara, whether you call it Ama or Mother, I invite you to open to this grace. Open your body and give yourself. Give yourself permission to be childlike, to be innocent. And to let go into the healing brave embrace of God. The healing embrace of the mother. I invite you to inwardly bow. And say yes. Yes, mother. I welcome you. I welcome you into my body. I welcome you into my mind. I welcome you into this very moment with me. Hold me, love me, embrace me. And so I invite you to let go, to open your crown chakra, just imagine that there's a bowl on your crown and just gently invite. Invite the Great Mother, the force of love, the force of compassion and intelligence to flow down into your body, into your form. I invite you to open the third eye to relax and open the throat chakra. Again, just take some deep and full breaths. Just inviting the force. Inviting the force of the mother into you. Giving yourself full permission to be blessed. So we're breathing, feeling, experiencing. And simultaneously, I invite you to relax and open the heart chakra. The call out from the heart. The mother of the universe, mother. Come into me. Tara, Pragna Paramita, come into me. Mary, come into me. Ama, come here. Fill this heart of mine with love. Bless me. And so what's required to open in this way is for us to be humble. Be humble, which is the opposite of prideful and arrogant. Most of us spend too much of our lives up here in our head. Too much of our lives thinking. And living from this place of superego. And so I invite you just to relax your thinking and give yourself permission to descend. Out of the mind, down through the throat chakra. And to come, to come deep into the heart. In the most humble way. And begin to experience your innocence, your gentleness, your quiet radiance, which is imminent, it's here. To experience this gentle sense of divinity, which is here, which is absolutely here. And so I invite you to feel, to experience. This quiet space of love, which you are. And simultaneously. I invite you to open, to being receptive, be willing to receive this grace, be willing to receive this love. 
Yes, and so I invite you to feel, to experience the truth of what you are, the divinity which you are. And I invite you to be humble and to allow your divinity to merge, to merge into the divinity, the oneness, the love and compassion of God. And so to follow a path of the mother, you have to be humble. You have to be willing to let go. You have to be willing to let go of pride. Let go of pride. Give yourself permission right here, right now to say yes to life. To say yes to the silence which is here. Say yes to the peace which is here. To say yes to the experience of your beauty, your intelligence. So we're opening, we're letting go, and we're giving ourselves permission. Simply to be humble opening and we're receiving this grace from above, this heavenly grace. And so we're opening the heart and inviting her, the mother, into us. And then simultaneously, we're going deeper within us. We're relaxing the solar plexus. Letting go of any fight, any will. Just breathing in and breathing out. Giving ourselves full permission to receive, to open, to experience. To experience this grace, this love. And as we breathe in and we, as we breathe out, we're going deeper. Breathing deep into the Hara Chakra and giving ourselves full permission just to relax, just to let go. So often there's an unconscious grip, an unconscious fight with life. Deep in the Hara Chakra. And so we're just taking some deep, full breaths and giving ourselves full permission just to let go. Just to let go. We're breathing, feeling. Experiencing everything. everything within us. The most humble way. All the while just inviting the fullness of our body to be blessed. Blessed by this grace. Be blessed by the Creator the loving intelligence of this universe. And so we're opening. We're feeling, we're experiencing. And we are saying yes. Yes to life. Yes to love, yes to grace. Yes, to being blessed by the mother. And so we're breathing, we're opening. And 
the most humble of ways. And so as we relax and breathe even deeper, we're relaxing and opening the root chakra, relaxing the pelvic floor, inviting God, the mother, the divine mother herself, to fill all seven chakras. To fill them with light, with grace. So simultaneously, we're relaxing the thighs, the legs, the calves, the shins, relaxing the arms and the hands, the jaw, the entirety of your body, relaxing and opening, opening to the hugeness, the imminence of your divinity. The omnipresence of your divinity and her divinity. And so I invite you just to sit here, to relax, to open. And notice how do you feel? How do you feel when you give yourself permission to be humble, to be open, to let go? How do you feel when you give yourself permission to drop out of the mind, to come into the heart? What do you notice about yourself? What is your direct experience? And you give yourself full permission right now to simply feel, to be, to experience. This hugeness, this love that you are. You give yourself full permission to feel, to experience the hugeness of your love, the hugeness of your own divinity. And from this space of Radiant imminence. Can you give yourself permission to open to God's grace, to the hugeness of what you are, of what you are? And so from this space, I invite you just to rest here, to rest, to be open to experience. And simply receive. Receive what's happening. Receive your divinity. Right here, right now. To experience this divinity in the crown, the third eye, the space of the throat, to receive and experience this divinity in the hugeness of your heart. To receive and experience this divinity in your solar plexus, in your belly, through
throughout your being? Can you feel? Can you experience? Can you be inclusive and give yourself permission to include every aspect, every aspect of your being, every aspect of being human? Can you feel, can you experience the hugeness of what you are? And so from this space of openness and receptivity, I'm going to now transition into the Dharma talk about opening to the Divine Mother. And I thought I would start with this, this quote from my teacher, Lama Soltram. She's one of the teachers I studied with. She wasn't my root teacher, but she was a teacher who deeply impacted me. And again, this is... This is from her, her latest book. It just came out. It's called Wisdom Rising. And she starts off the book by saying this. She says, the question that most women frequently, frequently ask me is how to integrate their spiritual lives with their everyday lives. The fact that we have to ask this question indicates the extent to which we are alienated from spirituality with a feminine presence. Because a reference point in all religious traditions with prominent feminine presence is an integration of spirit and matter, spirit and body, spirit and the earth, which leads to a spirituality being inseparable from daily life and to the experience of the divine as imminent rather than transcendent. And this is quite an interesting, quite an interesting point which she's bringing forward. Most of the major spiritual traditions you know, have a very masculine and patriarchal lineage to them. They tend to have a focus on getting to heaven on transcendence, on up and out, getting up and out of the earth. And one of the things that she talks about in her book is that the spiritual traditions who have, who have a feminine leader, who teach from the divine feminine principle, who have an aspect of opening to the divine mother, when we're open in this way, we see God everywhere. We experience God everywhere. We see that God is imminent. That God is here. Here. Whereas most of the masculine traditions, they focus on God in heaven or God in transcendence, God in emptiness. They don't talk much about form. And most of the masculine traditions, they talk about transcendence and they talk about earth and they talk about desire. They talk about, you know, females are almost like a dirty word. They try to control the earth, control females, transcend the earth, transcend their sexuality, transcend their children. And it's, the path tends to focus on this aspect, which is quite in exclusive, quite exclusive, where we see that the only thing that we're here to do on earth is to sit in meditation, is to sit and say our mantras all day and focus on God above. Whereas any mother, and that's what we're celebrating today, is today's Mother's Day. No mother transcends their children. They happily embrace their children. And you might even hear a little bit of uh, background noise happening. Right now at my house, there's, uh, you know, my wife is taking care of my four-year-old and getting her ready for bedtime. And this is something that mothers do. They take care. They're compassionate. They attend to the needs. They see spirituality 
in their daily lives? This is their question. Of how do I blend my spirituality in my daily life? You know, as Lama Solchin brings forward. Whereas most men, if you look at them, you know, the spirituality is, how can I transcend? How can I get rid of? How can I meditate more? How can I get out of this world? It's not that one's right and one's wrong, but there's consequences. There's consequences to our spiritual practice when our practice is simply about transcendence. What you'll find is your life is falling apart. What you'll find is there's all these chakra centers which feel tight and tense and out of whack because there's wounds there, there's pain, there's unresolved. You know, unresolved emotional emotional work. And so when we follow a path that embraces the world, we're much more willing to go into the darkness, to breathe into the pain, to meet ourselves with compassion. We're more likely to love our humanity and the humanity of others. You know, one of the uh, one of the things. This is a picture of uh, Tara here. I have a picture of Tara here in my hand. But if you ever notice, you know, oftentimes if you go to a Tibetan temple and you see a picture or a statue of Tara, she has one. You know, she's sitting with you know, in a half lotus, but it's a half lotus where she's, you know, has one leg in meditation posture. You know, and then her other foot is kind of stretched out, touching the earth. So one foot in meditation, one foot in the earth. And it's this wonderful teaching, this wonderful sense of embodiment that she has. This willingness to do both. And of course, this is our great challenge here on earth. Is to see our clients, to see our children, to see our family. To see ourselves and our very humanity as God. It's a great challenge. You know, any mother who looks at their child. Despite what the child does, you know, despite all the trouble that the child may get into, the mother looks at them in a loving way. A loving way. And so we can learn a lot. We can learn so much from the divine feminine. So I've studied the, the path of the mother in many, many different lineages, but my primary lineage was the lineage of Sri Aurobindo. And so much of the path is about opening to the mother's grace, opening to God's grace, being innocent and childlike and opening to being receptive. Opening to the experience of transformation. Not just transcendence, but transformation. And if we truly want our lives to be transformed, we have to be willing to first admit what's within us. That there's pain within us, that there's sadness within us, or fear or heartache. We must be willing to admit that there's a shadow here a, sh a shadow, a wound which wants to be loved. And again, going back to, you know, the masculine approach. The masculine approach is simply to transcend it, to ignore it, to deny it. To say, you know, the world is an illusion. And we can try that path of just calling the, the, calling the world an illusion. But what you'll find is in the end, that path will bite you in the butt. You cannot ignore the world. You cannot ignore your life. You cannot ignore your sexuality. 
Or I was meeting with someone the other day and she was telling me that their teacher, and they caught their teacher sleeping with prostitutes and making sexual advances, you know, to the students, you know, after meditation class. And then one night the teacher made a sexual advance to her. And his teaching was that the body was an illusion. But this type of teaching, well, you see, when you repress a shadow, when you repress a wound, when you repress some aspect of your humanity, will come forward, even in so-called enlightened beings. And so when I was at the Tarabandala temple yesterday, I was there with my wife and my daughter, and we were walking around the temple, and there's these 21 Tara statues, statues. And each one of them, you know, is a bikini, a goddess. And she embodied some quality of the divine. Some quality of wisdom, some quality of compassion. Sometimes it was a quality of like wrathfulness. Wrathfulness. You know, if we were good scientists, we would call this quality of wrathfulness the energy of change, the energy of transformation, the energy of evolution. Of evolution. And this is how Sri Aurobindo, he looked at the mother. The mother was this incredible force of evolution coming into our lives, inviting change, inviting growth. This force that was coming, continually coming into our lives and inviting us to grow, to give birth to that which is new, that which is greater. Not to simply go to one world of nirvana where everything ceases to exist and everything is an illusion but to invite God's grace, God's love, God's compassion, God's kindness, God's gentleness, God's spaciousness, God's emptiness. Invite all of it to come into us. To embody this grace, to embody this divinity which we are. In greater and greater ways, in greater and greater ways. And so when we are walking around the outside of the temple, there's all this beautiful art, all these pictures of the different Buddhas. So at each door, you know, at each of the four doors or the four directions, there was a different Buddha there. That's the other thing that I like about the, the divine feminine. Like a mother can have many children. And she loves them all. She sees that they are all manifestations of God. And in Tibetan Buddhism, there's not just one Buddha. There's many Buddhas. And they embody all these different qualities of divinity. All these qualities. And so as we went around to each of the doors, we saw that there was a Buddha and the Buddha was showing. And so say it was the Buddha of clear seeing and wisdom. And the Buddha was pointing out that there's an obscuration. The obscuration of clear seeing is confusion of being lost in thoughts of being lost in pride or arrogance or anger. And it's through the wisdom of clear seeing, through the wisdom of embodying this quality of awakened awareness, that we transform confusion into clarity. It's through embracing power and seeing it with, with love that this power 
becomes manifest in our life. In a healthy way, a divine way, a way that's not abusive. If you look at individuals like Jesus or Buddha, they used their power. It wasn't running. It wasn't running from a place of ego. It was running from a place of love. From a place of love. And so one of the beautiful things about the mother, the, the divine mother or our earthly mothers, is that they are willing to hold us through the pain. They're willing to hold us through the transformative process. It's because they've developed this strength of compassion. It's because they've developed this willingness to sit with emotion that they can hold us through this process. Now, oftentimes I have individuals come to me and they say, Craig, I don't have, I didn't have a good mother. So I don't like it when you talk about the divine mother. Now, sometimes people tell me, they say, Craig, I don't like it when you talk about God because my first experience in church, you know, of God was a God of judgment. And so whenever I'm speaking about something, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'm speaking about it in its highest form. So the divine mind. The mother who loves us, the creator, the all-compassionate love of the universe is what I'm speaking about. When I talk about God, I'm not talking about the God in church who's an angry old man who's judging us. I'm talking about God who loves us. Who's the love and the compassion who made you, who made the beauty and the innocence of your heart. And so you, if you have a wound with your earthly mother, I invite you to trust that it's okay to let that go. It's okay to grieve that you didn't get the mother that you wanted, that you weren't born into the family that you wanted to be born into. And to grieve that, to let it go, and then simultaneously open your heart to the mother of the universe. But do not choose to be jaded. Do not choose to be jaded. And so, yes, I had this very wonderful experience of being at Tara Mandala yesterday. Walking around the temple, seeing all these images of these Dakinis with one foot in meditation and one foot in the world. And because I assume most of us, most of us here are not monks and nuns, we must learn this practice. We must learn how to have one foot in meditation and one foot in the world simultaneously. Simultaneously. You know, as we do so, we begin to honor. We honor this world. We honor our humanity. We honor the earth. Whereas when we simply practice a transcendent form of spirituality, we don't honor the earth. We don't honor our body. We don't honor our friends and family. And so this great invitation here is to practice in this way. Practice in the way that Tara, the great mother, great Pragna Paramita, the way she practices, one foot in meditation, and one foot on earth, one foot in each. Can we embrace our children? Can we embrace our planet? Can we embrace all the animals? I was reading that we're having a mass extinction on this planet, mass extinction. And when we choose to have a leader, we choose to have leaders who deny the planet, who deny the earth, who leave the Paris Climate Accord, who get rid of parks. You notice throughout history, when there's been patriarchal societies, 
and have been abusive towards women, they've also been abusive towards the environment. But when we've had societies that have listened to the wisdom of the mother, there's been a natural respect for women, a natural respect for the feminine, a natural respect for our planet, the earth, ourselves, our bodies, our sexuality, our humanity, our emotions. And so this is the type of spirituality that I'm inviting forward is a spirituality which is inclusive. If we are going to speak about true non-duality, true non-duality is inclusive. And so th thank you all uh, uh, for listening to me here. I'm gonna highly recommend this book, Wisdom Rising, Journey into the Mandala of the Empowered Feminine by Lama Sultra. Lama Sultra was the first, uh, first Western nun in Tibetan Buddhism. So she's quite a, uh, quite a cutting edge lady. But she was a nun for a handful of years. Uh, she was ordained by the Karmapa and then at some point, she felt that she needed to learn to embody her divinity. And so she disrobed and went on to have children and said it deeply impacted her life. And I can say the same thing. I once too used to live like a monk you know, for, for a couple of years in the beginning of the spiritual path. I lived in a celibate way, just trying to transcend the world, get rid of the world. But after a while, I realized it wasn't working. I needed to learn to embody. Learn to embody. Learn to embrace. And my first daughter, Amaya, she taught me more about opening my heart. You know, the moment she was born, than, than all the years of meditation practice I had, all the hours, thousands and thousands of hours that I had done. As soon as I saw her come forward and held her, I realized, oh boy, oh boy, there's a whole nother realm of divinity that I had been absolutely ignoring. So anyways, for right now, I welcome some questions. Uh, I have, um, you know, a couple of questions from emails, but if you have one, you can, you can bring it forward. You can type the question, um, you know, in the message bar there, you can, uh, Grab a hold of the microphone if you want to do that or ask for the mic. But the first one I'm going to talk about is from uh, from Eric. Uh, he writes in here. Uh, Craig, uh, I recently watched your latest video on YouTube on, uh, on listening to your heart and finding your true vocation. And lately I've been feeling that my time at this job is ending. It's not the right place for me, and I feel very clear. Uh, feel very clear that now it's the time for me to go. When I turn inward to my heart, though, there is a deep clenching and a fear. It can get ridiculous. When I head to work in the morning, it feels like I have to push through this deep fear as I walk down the hallway to my desk. There are some thoughts, but it's almost entirely physical. When I sit with it right now, it puts tears in my eyes. And it does feel like the, there's also a beauty about it. It's scary and beautiful. And this is beautiful, Eric. And so I encourage you to continue to open in this way. To open in this way where you're giving yourself permission to feel it fully, to experience it fully. One of the qualities of being a mother or being a parent, one of the qualities of the divine feminine, like I've been speaking about tonight, is a willingness to sit with something through the night. To sit with a crying child through the night. So no good mother, no loving and compassionate mother looks at their child and tells them, get over it. Transcend it. You're an illusion. A good loving mother feels and embraces 
acknowledges and includes the healing. And so if you're having fear, I invite you to feel it fully, to experience it fully, to open to it fully. Day or night, meditation or no meditation, walking down the street, driving the car, I invite you simply to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel the fear, feel the heat of it, the rawness of it, the coolness of it, the clench of it. Open to it. Open to it. And see, see what you're beginning to see, that there is some beauty here. Some beauty. You know, the other day, my child, she had a, she, she got a cold, but maybe three weeks ago, but she's had a sinus infection that's developed. And so she has this, you know, sometimes she has this really bad hacking cough, kind of cough that when you hear, you know, people are like, oh boy, <laughs> I want to step, stay away from that kid. You know, but she's, she's totally fine. You know, she doesn't have a fever. She's the cold has moved through her body, but she has this hacking cough. And the other day I was, I was holding her and she was kind of hacking on her phlegm. Started to have tears in her eyes. And yet when I saw her, I didn't see this sick child. I saw this divine child sitting here in my lap. And I held her. And my mind had a very long to-do list of things that I was supposed to be getting done. But as a parent, you drop everything. As a mother, you drop everything. And you embrace that, that which is within you. You sit with it patiently. Patiently. So my next question kind of feeds off that one. This is from uh, Kate in California. She says, Hi, Craig. Thank you so much for graciously answering all my questions. I feel like a bother. Okay, don't say that. <laughs> I asked my teacher 10,000 questions, so <laughs> you don't have to feel like a bother. This is our job, you know. This is our job to support each other here on planet Earth. But I don't know what to do, what else to do besides reach out. I must know that this will pass. So Kate's struggling with some pain, some anxiety. I want to know that I did not come here simply to suffer. I know I have an offering for this world and have been so sincere all my life in helping others and trying my best to be a pure light of love. I'm afraid that I'll not resolve all my traumas, that this thing that has plagued me before the kundalini started to come forward within me, will never go away. It feels terrible, terribly complicated, and I'm terrified my whole life will be this way. So this world, this world is hard. I'm not going to lie. But again, Kate, like I was speaking with Eric before you, we must be patient. We must be patient. We must be loving. We must be compassionate. And so when we when we bring together, if we look at the the healthy, uh, divine, masculine aspect and the divine feminine aspect, the divine feminine, I've been speaking about that all night, this sense of embracing, of loving, of being compassionate with everything within us, acknowledging it, holding it, feeling it, but if we balance that with the divine masculine, the divine masculine is the sense of backbone. It's the sense of strength that says, I am strong enough. I have faith. I trust that I will heal. I trust that I will get through this. And all of us here on planet Earth, we need to realize both these spiritual qualities of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. 
we have to be women. When we feel overwhelmed by feeling, to call upon this strength, to reach deep within and find this strength within us. That's why it's helpful to have two parents, a mother and a father. A mother and the father. And so the healthy quality of the divine masculine or the father is the sense of strength, the sense of truth, the sense of power in knowing I will get through this. I'm strong enough to get through this. I can get through this. I believe in myself. I believe in, in life. I know. I know that what's here is divine. And if you cannot find these qualities within you, of the divine masculine or the divine feminine, I invite you to call upon those two qualities. Call upon God. Invite her into your life. Invite his strength into your life. Invite her love and compassion into your life. Give yourself permission to be childlike, to be humble, and to ask for help. To ask for help. And Kate, I've met your, your angels before, and they're absolutely beautiful. So call upon them. You know, all of us here, <laughs> you know, we can call upon God the Father, God the Mother. We can also call upon our angels who want nothing more than to serve you and to love you. There's no crime in calling out for help. And it's free, too. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> One of the things my teacher said to me continually, he said, God, he said, Craig, call the mother into your life. Invite her into your life. The more you do so, the more you and her become one. But if you suffer from the affliction of pride or arrogance and think, I need to meditate my way into heaven all by myself. Well, you close out. You put this wall between you and God, between you and life, between you and this greater divinity. So it's a great sin, you know, when we close that door to God. And by sin, I mean we miss the mark. We miss out on this wonderful grace that's available to all of us. And so in the last couple of minutes, I thought I would just touch on this because much of this evening I spoke about the healthy side of the divine feminine and the shadow side of the divine masculine. But at the end there, I was began to talk about the healthy side of the divine masculine. But the shadow side, Kate, of the divine feminine is this feeling that, oh no, I can't heal. I won't heal. I'm going to get lost in pain and suffering. And we spin ourselves in circles. We lose faith. We become frantic or anxious or... You know, our body gets filled with all this frenetic energy where we just feel like there's no ground. No ground under our feet. Of course, the shadow side of the divine masculine is we're cold, we're shut off. All we want to do is transcend and leave this world. And we're prideful or arrogant. And so there's shadows to both the masculine side and the feminine side of divinity. But if we truly want to live in a way, a truly where we are open, awake, and integrated in this world, fully enlightened in this world, we must know both. We must be willing to open, like they say in Zen, to having the strong back and an open heart. The strong backbone, it's that sense of clarity, it's a sense of strength. It's a, a sense of being able to see, okay, my mind's being crazy. I'm going to let go of these thoughts. I'm going to step out of this mind. Step out of this mind. I'm going to step into my heart. A heart which is open, which is clear, which is compassionate and loving. Can I step into both?
and I open to the truth of both. And so, yeah, so, so these questions were great questions, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your questions, and thank you all for sharing your hearts with me this evening. And thank you all at the Awakening Together community, and thank you all. I'm doing uh, simultaneously a, a Facebook live stream, and it's my first time trying the Facebook live stream, so I didn't didn't announce it. It was kind of a test just to see if see if I could do both at the same time. And so I'll see if I can do it again next week. And uh, I'll advertise it and have more people uh, be a part of it. And you can see the video feed and this and that. But I encourage all of you, if you have a question, you know, send it to me, bring it forward. If you have a question, open your heart to God. Open your heart to the mother. Bring this question to her. Invite her to speak to you through the innocence of your own heart, through a dream, through a meditation. I can't tell you how many meditations I've had where I sat with a question and the answer would just arise in my heart. Or God would just plant this vision in me and say, oh, look at this, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> So much is possible to us. So much is possible for us when we are willing to let go of our thinking mind, let go of pride, let go of arrogance, let go of thinking that we know. And that willingness just to come into our heart and be receptive. Be receptive. So thank you all for joining me this evening. Uh, thank you all for the donations last week. And uh, of course, I invite you uh, to offer a donation uh, for tonight's satsang. And you can visit my website, craigholiday.com. There's a PayPal link there. Uh, you know, these teachings are offered free. But the Dharma, it's important that we support the Dharma in this work important that we support the Dharma. It's important that we support it with our hearts, with our minds, with our bodies, our actions. And yes, it's important to support it financially so the Dharma can continue. So it can continue. So if you benefited from this tonight, tell a friend. You know, share this with others. You know, all this Dharma has been passed down thousands of years, just as it was passed to me, to my teachers. And so join me in bowing to all the teachers, all the mothers, all those who have served us. And I bow before you. Thank you for sharing your hearts with me. Thank you for showing up in the most open-hearted and loving way. May peace be with you all. May all of you have a wonderful evening. Take good care. And thank you all on Facebook. Thanks for joining me. And uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to be here. I'll try this again in the, in the future and do a better job of uh, promoting it. But thank you for... Uh, for being a part of the, this first satsang, this first uh, Facebook Live and test. So thank you all and may peace be with you all. Good night or whatever time of day it is. God bless your soul.